that question, we have to step back and say, well, why should they be the same? So, so answer the, that question. Why would you expect these three numbers to be the same? Yes, Adam. Okay, well, the, the answer is, uh, you're right, but let me explain. First of all, we're taking nine people. Now, obviously, we're not taking nine. We're not giving th drug number one to three very old, sick people and drug number three to three very healthy people. That makes no, 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 no logical sense. We try to get nine people that have the same age, the same sex, the same weight, the same race, the same economic status, maybe, the same lifestyle, the same degree of blood, the same degree of high blood pressure. We like to get the nine people as similar as possible if we can. And then we just randomly assign, three, you three guys take this drug, you three guys take this drug for a few weeks, you three guys just randomly assign them. We'll talk about that terminology on, on next time we can meet. But these are three people who are very, very similar people taking the exact same drug. And the fact that these numbers might be different is not surprising because they're three different, they're two different drugs. But th why are these three people taking the exact same drug? Now, by the way, these numbers are bad numbers. I should have chosen different numbers, but we're, we're stuck with them now. Um, so Alam is saying that you're, you're all taking the exact same drug, so they should be theoretically the same. So now my question now makes more sense. Why are they different? Yes. Exactly, exactly. In other words, the point is, and, and it, Sarah is saying something which can be simplified as people are different. I mean, it can be taking the, the exact, we think they're all very similar, but there are differences between them that are, that are subtle and like something could have happened to them. They could be nervous, different personality. So now, if you were do, designing the experiment and you were the best researcher in the entire world, you try to get three people maybe who are triplets. So they have the same parents, they have everything, the same age, the same genetics. I mean, if you, if you, now you can't do that, of course. So we call the variation, again, the, the, the fact that the numbers are different, first of all, we measure by the variance. The variance is a variation among numbers. So the symbol for the variance is sigma squared. But what is this, the variance within a group? So the fact that these three numbers are different can be expressed mathematically as the variation within a group. And now we're trying to explain it, so that's equal to, meaning what's the reason why it varies, why are these numbers vary, and Anam said and Sarah uh, repeated that that's because people are different. Now the, another, the fancy way of saying people are different is saying experimental error. In other words, if you were the perfect researcher, which of course nobody could be, you would get everybody exactly the same so that when they take the exact same drug, they're gonna react the exact same way. The fact that they're different means you fail to some extent in being the perfect researcher. We call that experimental error, the error that the experimenter introduced by not having designed the experiment perfectly. Okay, now likewise, why are these three numbers different? They're all taking the same drugs, so the answer is the same thing. Why are these three drugs, why are these, why are these three drugs, why are these three numbers different? And the answer is experimental error, experimental error, experimental error. The last, next to the last thing of this whole development, now what about these numbers? Why are these numbers different? Why is the 36, the 92, and the 49 different? Yes, Adam? What? Well, first, there are two reasons. So the variation among the, col among the groups, because not, this is within a group. So it's among, and the two, ba the two basic things is among and within. Uh, among the groups, which is what the numbers are from here to here to here, or here to here to here, the variation among the groups can be attributed to two reasons. First of all, Maybe the drugs are different. Maybe who says the A0 is right? Maybe the H1 is right and the drugs really are different, which is why you're getting different results. So maybe, in fact, we call that uh, experimental treatment or treatment effect. Historically, this came out with they treated different plots of land with different fertilizers and they tried to see how much growth they got. So this started about 100 years ago with, uh, with agricultural research. Now it's used mainly in, 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 or a lot in medical research. So the treatment, variation due to treatment, but that's only half the story. What's the other half of the story? And let's assume for argument's sake that the, the A0 is true, that these three drugs are exactly the same. Do you expect these three numbers to be the same? No, they say people are different here and they're different over here also. So it works in both directions. So the, ex the fact that people are different, called experimental error, works across as well. Now what we're gonna learn, uh, Experimental error. So, if you take the variation 
among the groups. Now, how do you calculate the variation among the groups? Well, we're going to learn a shortcut formula for it in, on a week from Monday after the break. But basically, it's calculating the variance. You know, you calculate, you know, the S squared equals x minus x. This is a shortcut, but basically, this is what you're going to be using again and again. You'll be doing it this way. You'll be doing it that way. And so you sort of put them all together. But if you take the calculation among the groups and divide it by the variation within a group, Now, we're going to learn how this comes. You know, just, there's a formula for this, and there's a formula for that. This ratio is called the F ratio. I'm going to know we're down to minus one minute. We're going to finish this up already. What's the bottom side of the calculation called? It's, what's the variation within a group? Only the experimental error, which, again, is a fancy way of saying people are different. So putting this all together, and hopefully in the next 20, 30 seconds, if this F ratio, can F is simply one number divided by another number. It hopefully it takes you know, a couple of minutes. If the F is equal to one, what does that imply? If it turns out the top part and the bottom part are the same, what does that imply? What's the, final, the logical conclusion of this whole thing? Yes. The the, that's the, first of all, the first thing it means is that this thing here got to be zero because something divided by itself so this has to be zero. What does it mean if the experimental error? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's a big mistake. I've been doing it too fast. Not that this is zero. This, this is the same as that. It means the treatment effect is zero. What does it mean to say the treatment effect? Does that mean the H0 is right or the H1 is right? The treatment effect means how much the drugs differ from each other, how much the treatment really had an impact on the data. So if the treatment effect, so the only way the top and bottom could be the same, the only way the F ratio comes out to one is if this comes out to zero. But if it comes out to zero, what does that imply about the A0? The A0 is what, true or false? True. In other words, the A0, that means all the drugs are the same, meaning there is no, all the drugs are the same, meaning there is no treatment effect. The treatment effect is zero. On the other hand, if the F ratio is bigger than one, what does that imply? If the F ratio is bigger than one, that implies the top is bigger than the bottom, which means what? This is the same as that, so this has to be a positive number. It has to be on, the only way the top can be bigger than the bottom if it's not the top is a positive. So that implies what? That the H1 is true. That there is there is a substantial treatment effect. Okay. Now the only thing we have to the only subtlety that we have to worry about is how do you learn how to how do you calculate these two numbers, which we'll learn about on Monday or next week from Monday. And secondly, what if it comes out to 1.01? Does that imply the A0 is true? Well, again, in all the statistics, we have to give it some leeway. In other words, if it's 1.01, we're, we're not going to say that. In other words, 1.01 is truly bigger than 1, but we're not going to say the, A0 is, the H1 is true. It's got to be substantially bigger than 1 before we start believing the, H, the H1. The only question is how much bigger, and that's going to depend upon the alpha, the degrees of freedom, a diagram, all those details. What? It can't be less because the top. These are all positive numbers, so the top got to be bigger than the bottom. 